Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Smith, Registered Dental Assistant here at Gladwell Dental. Thanks for joining us today. We're continuing Dr. Chi's series where he's tackling common problems that clinicians face with digital intraoral scans. Megan, do you, do you hear something? No, we're filming what? Uh, it's uh, digital, digital noise. noise. Oh. Failed preventative measures during a, a scan mm -hmm. can cause digital noise, okay. such as uh, tissue not being properly retracted, mm -hmm. saliva, uh, things like that. Blood. And blood even. Ooh. So Dr. Chi is gonna talk about some different things that can cause digital noise mm -hmm. and how to fix them. Well, Dr. Chi, we're all ears. Take it away. Taking digital impressions is a dynamic process. Unlike a PVS and a traditional impression tray where you fill it with PVS and let it sit on the teeth, it's kind of a hands-off process. Digital impressions is dynamic. You want to make sure that you're moving the camera around on all of the areas that you need to scan and ensure that the three-dimensional model that's generating on the screen is generating correctly. So by analyzing the model as you're scanning, it will help you avoid distortions or noise in that impression, which is a possibility, especially whenever you're scanning around the anterior region. Because with the scanner, when it views data points, it tries to stitch all of the following data points to what it has originally recognized. With the anterior teeth, since they're more flat, more flat surfaces on the facial and lingual, sometimes the scanner can get confused if that data is not laid onto that original model correctly. So let's review how to ensure that we can avoid distortions and extra noise because those could lead to inaccuracies in that final impression. Let's take a look. So another critical aspect of our digital impression is to avoid any sort of distortions, noise, misalignments in our digital model. And that would basically appear as any sort of area of our digital model that just does not look right. It doesn't look like the patient's teeth. Uh, their misalignments would appear as like layers to the teeth. And if you notice that's incorrect, the patient truly doesn't have that, which most shouldn't. Uh, you wanna try to stop and deactivate the camera, remove that from the model. Each scanner has a different method of deleting areas from the digital model. Uh, catch that early. The, the ideal is to catch it as it's developing, but it is important when you're analyzing your model to kind of keep an eye out for those things. If you see any sort of distortion, especially if it's close to the preparation, uh, that can seriously negatively impact the accuracy of the restoration. So we'll go through how to avoid that, uh, some tips on how to avoid it, and hopefully that can help you with your digital scans. So we're currently working on a prep on the lower right quadrant, number 30, uh, but I'll just show you what I typically try to do to avoid any distortions. Now, one of the key ways to avoid any distortions or noise or misalignments goes back to the fundamentals of keeping things dry. Uh, the more dry the field is, the more accurate the scanner and the software within the system can create an accurate digital model. So I'm gonna capture the quadrant scan on the lower right area. So the key, starting out with the fundamentals, making sure that things are dry, things are isolated. Um, here I'm using a mirror on the buccal side to help keep the cheek out of the way. Now, having the soft tissue, keeping tabs on that where the tongue and the cheek are, the lips during the scan, is gonna be very important. So we wanna to try to keep those away from the area that we're scanning because the focus will be the teeth and the soft tissue around them. Also having the patient relax, just relax a little bit and on the lower or upper, especially when you're very far distal, making sure the patient's relaxed and sometimes not at that full opening, uh, you can ask them to close slightly to release some of the tension. If they're really forceful during their opening, it just tightens up all of the soft tissue and makes it harder to retract those areas. But of course, we do wanna have them open enough so we have access to what we're trying to scan. So it's that fine balance between open enough and a relaxed position for the patient. So starting off over the last tooth, I activate the camera. And to avoid those distortions, you wanna move at a smooth, relatively slow pace. So I'm moving my way mesial once I reach the most mesial area I want to scan, which is almost always the canine for posterior situations, now I'll rotate to the lingual and begin working my way back toward where I started, that last tooth, number 31, and moving slowly. 
So moving slowly, and again going back to keeping it dry is going to help avoid distortions. On the buckle side, I'll remove the mirror for the buckle retraction and just allow the camera access and the ability to retract the soft tissue for me. As I work my way toward the mesial, now the camera has less of an ability to retract this lower lip, so I may need to go back in there and have the patient close slightly. Close a little bit, please, Key. All right, so once they close, some, it actually releases some of the soft tissue so you can rotate and visualize these areas near the front, near the anterior region, and allows during, for that retraction. Now, whenever we move slowly, that's also going to be important to avoid the distortions. But one of the critical aspects during the scan is to analyze the model, the digital model, as it's generating. Watch the screen, watch where you're positioned, and watch the data get added to your model. If you notice any strange area, like you know where you're scanning over the canine, but for some reason the system put it at a weird angle or, or an incorrect position, you want to try to catch that early on because if that happens due to a misalignment because of the area being too wet or uh, too hard of a rotation, that certainly can throw off the accuracy of the scan. So it's ideal to capture it then, delete those areas that are incorrect, and then continue on with your scan. Sometimes it might be even easier to just start over. And if you're new to the digital scanning, it's okay. Sometimes you have to just restart, but that's the beauty of the system. It's easy to catch your mistakes, analyze your model, and restart if necessary. You'd rather have a fresh starting point than continue to build off of an incorrect generation of that digital model for, from your patient. Now, as you begin working your way toward the anteriors, the anterior region is where many misalignments can occur because you have just more flat surfaces on the facial and lingual. So as you work your way toward the anterior, you not only need to make sure you keep the soft tissue in check, as in retracted and away from the area you're scanning, but you also want to continue moving slowly and generate those facial and lingual surfaces slowly. I like to capture mostly from the uh, incisal lingual first and build those areas and then rotate to the facial. I usually finish the facial with the very last. Close a little bit more, a little bit more, there we go. So once you rotate to the facial, you start off at the incisal and then slowly build in those facial areas. That will allow the system a chance to build those areas in correctly instead of just going straight to the facial without it really understanding how to align that data. So as you work your way toward the anterior region for those full mouth scans, you want to make sure you go slowly, but also build in this new data to the digital model slowly. So slow rotations, light rotations from the incisal, and again, analyze the model as it generates. So if we zoom in on this area in the anterior, you want to make sure that the teeth are generating correctly. Of course, there are some areas that are missing. I may need to change the angulation, but you want to see that the tooth or the teeth positions on the digital model do accurately match what the patient has. Again, with those misalignments, you may see layers to the teeth, and that's usually an indication that there was some sort of misalignment that occurred. So throughout this digital impression process, analyzing your impressions, that true digital model, is going to be very important to the success of your cases. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Chi. He's still looking for the digital noise. Well, <laughs> while I find that, okay. we're going to tune into the next episode where Dr. Chi is going to talk about acquiring the digital bite registration. You won't want to miss it. And if you missed any of the other episodes, you can head to chairsidelive.com, of course, and catch up there. But for today, we're all wrapped up. So on behalf of everyone here at Glywell Dental, thank you so much for watching. We'll meet you right back here next time. Okay.